We are here at the traffic conference in Houten, and I'm talking to Serge Lambermant. Lambermant. He's Dutch, but we're talking English because he lives in Silicon Valley and he is in charge of autonomous driving at Delphi. Last year we talked, and uh, we basically talked about the state of the art of the autonomous driving. You have now two interesting projects, Singapore and Pittsburgh. What are you doing there? We're doing uh, projects all over the world, but we're, we're also working on improvements on the, the current vehicles. You can see our uh, products on current vehicles already on the road, and we're working on the new technologies with the OEMs, but also cities in uh, Europe, in the US, and uh, uh, Singapore, we just announced we're doing a big So what do you, what's going to happen in Singapore? Well, in Singapore, we are really testing um, automated mobility on demand. So we have vehicles drive around, and basically you can take your, your app and... Reserve. Uber. You have Uber and you reserve a taxi. Who, who are the partners you play with? We're doing that um, ourselves with um, the Singapore um, uh, authorities um, on a test bed in Singapore. Uh, with your own platform, with your own software, so it's not Uber, uh, Uber kind of thing uh, yet. And then you're going to experiment if, if the cars can completely drive themselves. Well, that's one part of it, but it's also like how you can optimize mobility in the future. It's not only the, the vehicle, but it's also the city. Um, the the infrastructure in the city and the ecosystem in the city. How small companies um, can uh, connect with the vehicles and get information from these vehicles. How um, many cars will be involved? Um, six cars initially. Okay. So Pittsburgh, what's happening there? In Pittsburgh, we are doing um, development like in Silicon Valley. We have offices everywhere. Um, there's a lot of software development being done. Uh, in these sites, but Uber is interesting. Uh, Uber is doing a Pittsburgh test, you know, with uh, test with with autonomous driving uh, vehicles. Uh, but you're working there with an uh, with a university, right? We have our own office in uh, in in Pittsburgh. Of course, we work very closely with uh, with Carnegie Mellon University. Yes, yeah. they have. What have they created? Um, Carnegie Mellon University has worked for a long time on automated driving uh, algorithms as other universities, but we work very closely with them. Actually, we, we got a lot of the, the software from Carnegie Mellon University, mm -hmm. and we are um, uh, providing that as a, a solution to, to our customers. Yeah, because you're uh, basically a manufacturer of all kinds of smart electronic hardware and sensors and, and partly software systems. Um, and you're doing now a lot of testing. When are we getting, I mean, I showed you the video of uh, Tesla, you know, who basically comes with Autopilot 2 and my car will be arriving in December and it will drive completely itself, according to the video, from my home to my work and then park itself and pick it up. And that will be a production car. What did you think of that video? No, I think it's wonderful. The engineers, they, they love it. They love working on this technology worldwide. Um, we see, I see that in my company as as um but this is the direction. first company this is the first product which is a standard product which you can just buy off the road and what you have in the lab to have it in a production car right isn't that significant it's um i think we provide these solutions to to everybody but we also do all the the testing and the, the rigor that goes uh, behind it mm -hmm. um but but again like i think it's fantastic um to work uh, on these technologies and we provide also this kind of sensors and pieces that that go in uh, these vehicles yes you're in the middle trying to do all these projects working with uh, also potential commercial projects is the rate of change and the rate of interest and the amount of effort money and brains put into it is it accelerating compared to last year when we were talking at inter traffic in Amsterdam absolutely it's it's really fantastic i all the universities i'm to i'm i'm actually in the in the dutch university at delft uh, this friday um, it's just fantastic how the new engineers are picking this up um, uh, work it's the next the frontier. Huh? It's 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 so exciting, and it's you can see it in the the energy in the organizations, um, and at the students. It's fantastic. Okay, so the university are all on board. Everybody loves it. What about the car manufacturers? I mean, that's a very conservative bunch. Uh, who want to test and test and retest and do you see an acceleration there too? Absolutely as well and they they have like um, they are actually re very often restructuring their uh, departments to work very closely uh, with us um, and I can see the same energy there and it's actually an, it's enlightening it's it's really really nice. Is the car industry actually changing? It's changing, yes, absolutely. Um, of course, there's, um, uh, there will be some which are um, very, very good and yeah. very fast. Yeah. Um, there are some who are um, setting up their strategies. It's it's complicated uh, software. It's complicated hardware. If it was easy, 
It would have been done. It's just more interesting to do something interesting. Now, five years from now, 2000, 2020, what product can I buy and what will I be able to do here in the Netherlands? You'll have many, many different new products. And it, um, cars will get more green. Yeah. They, um, you'll get more and more electric uh, um, converters, electric batteries, technologies uh, in vehicles, um, electric mobility. Um, cars get more safe. We get like a lot of um, products that, that will help avoid accidents, not only help you survive the accident. Um, and we get uh, connected vehicles. And this, this connectivity is very, very important for um, the automated driving as well. Yeah. So automated driving in 2020, what can I buy? In 2021, um, the the public will actually see the first uh, services and they, they will get engaged with the products of automated driving cars. So but your your example that you just showed is, is excellent. The the public is actually um, getting used to it. The the technology is socializing. It's like um your 2021 the p the public will see what you're having in the lab but what i is tesla then and an, an, an total strange guy that they already put a product like that on the market now um tesla is super aggressive uh i can't say for um there's several oems working on this um there's uh, there's some who are like more more advanced um the the public will oh, see who's more advanced than tesla no more there are some companies more advanced mm -hmm. in um, from the OEMs, yeah. Um, you, more and more people see this technology already today. They've been in our vehicles, um, they've been in uh, um, vehicles from OEMs, um, and they are experiencing the, the self-driving. Okay. And the, the, the experience itself, it's... it's uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, yes. Yeah. Most people are very afraid of it, but when, once they are in the car yeah. and they feel it... 10 minutes, 30 minutes... Actually, only a few minutes, three, four minutes. After three or four minutes, you're completely used to autonomous driving. You go like, I want it. And if you see how it drives in Silicon Valley, you want it now. Why does it take so long, Sergi? Or Singapore. No, it's, it takes... Automated driving is rather complicated. And you want to make sure that you verify these systems uh, rigorously before you put them in. Sergi is very important because Delphi delivers all these parts to manufacturers. So if he has a cutter ready to go product, you know, at a reasonable price, we'll see it on the road a lot more. So next year I'll talk to you more. Thank you very much.